Welcome back to my channel, spooky friends. Today is another Dead by Daylight mask for one of our favorite killers. Well, we love to hate him, really. We go and trap a bitch, trap a bitch. Today we made the trapper mask. I really love how it turned out. Um, all the materials are going to be listed down below. They're basically the same as the huntress mask with a few additional um, piece materials called polymorph plastic for the teeth and rigid wrap strips which we've used in the past on this channel um, for any of my other masks. Honestly, every single one of them. <laughs> I love plaster bandages. Um, but yeah, this has the same base mask, Mardi Gras mask that we started with. And then we used rigid wrap to create the circular eyes over the more cat eye on the mask. So if you wanna see how to create this, then keep on watching. We might also have an Easter egg um, behind me of the next Dead by Daylight mask. Can you guess? Can you guess who it is next, just from that? Hmm? Hmm? Try to guess. Hmm? All right, guys, let's get creating. All right, get out the Mardi Gras masks. We're also going to be using plaster bandages, plaster, powder, tongue depressors, paintbrush, Sharpie, a mixing bowl that you don't care about, and some clear glue, just like the other video. Now, um, to start this all off, I always really like to just outline what I'm doing. Um, specifically for this mask, I don't want to cut out the um, shape of the mouth yet because I don't want to lose that structural integrity. I did this on a previous mask and it was just too flimsy and the plaster is just too heavy for it to hold um, in this delicate of a shape when it's cut out. So what I would recommend is not cutting it out, just drawing the shape on there and then we're going to build up the area with the plaster paste and then cut it out later. Now I'm just doing um, a thin layer around the area that I drew on and around the nose because eventually we're going to build up the nose area to where it's not so triangular and nose shaped. <laughs> um, we really kind of want to conceal the fact that there is a full blown nose hole in this um, because when you look at the trapper's mask he just has a small like peak for his nose it's not really like um, a full nose so just keep layering it up on either side bringing it up towards the cheeks as well and then when we get to the eyes I would recommend using plaster bandages for this I did not have any next to me while I was working, uh, which was a big mistake. You want to make sure all your materials are within reach and already prepped, um, but I wasn't sure what I was going to do for the eyes quite so quickly in this video. I was just kind of winging it, and what I ended up using was a small strip of bandage from an old mummy costume. And these are just like um, medical bandages that I dipped in coffee to stain them. So basically I'm putting a layer of the plaster paste down and then I'm laying down the, the bandage, which is essentially a strip of cotton. So you don't have to use plaster bandages for this. You could just use like a cotton round, um, a couple of pieces of normal cotton or um, even a simple piece of fabric but the plaster I think would have worked a little better for it um, had I been prepared and used it so with this eye area um, you're putting down a thick layer you're waiting till the plaster is still really easy to manipulate but that it's almost at a point where it's 
hard to manipulate. So it's going to be very thick. So when you lay down that little strip, you're covering it with a really super thick layer of the plaster. Um, you don't want it to be a thin layer because then its structural integrity won't be as good. Um, it'll just seep through and kind of cause a mess. So we want it to be thick. And then, you know, you can work on the circular shape. You're just putting in a um, strip on either side. And then once the paste is really thick, you can shape it into a circle. Um, so you'll get that look that he has. The next few steps are just building up layers so that everything has the same texture and it's super thick. And then while it's drying, you can just take either a scissors or an X-Acto knife or um, a sharp utensil, but be very careful and just cut out the detailing um, that's in the mask. So he has scratches and stuff like that. Um, all I did was take that scissors and just scratch it literally because this paste is um, just that it's just a paste you can manipulate it in any way that you want and it will allow you to cut it essentially um, for the top part I wasn't able to get that part filmed I just cut little divots in the top and then ran the plaster paste down with the end of a tongue depressor and just used a sharp utensil to make the cuts and texture that I did at the top. So it, it's really simple once you get this, this shape built up to just use a sharp utensil to get that texture in. And you're just gonna keep building up until, like I said, you can't really see that nose area as much as it was before. We want it to look completely different. So keep going, I believe in you. <laughs> it's a very repetitive process. Now we're gonna go ahead and prep these teeth. I'm using my kettle, electric kettle, to boil water. And once you have boiled water, you're gonna take your polymorph beads and put a good amount in a cup. You're pouring the boiling water into the cup with the beads and you're letting the beads go completely clear. Once they are clear, um, that means they're ready to take out and manipulate. So you can take them out with a tweezers, make sure it's okay to touch, and then roll it into like a circle or a long tube rather. And then you're just simply putting a, um, a sharp edge on one side and you're cutting it. So you have little triangles um, and then you can place it on top of a, like a hard edge to get the bottom of the tooth to be very flat. So as you can see here, you just chop it and then flatten that edge that you chopped on something and then you let it set and you make 24 of these <laughs> so get creating um i think i did something around 24 to 30 little teeth and do variations in size so that there doesn't have to be um they're not all the same and then once you're done with this if you have extra just put it back in the bag and use it later because this is reusable. Now to get these bad boys on, I used a hot glue gun. And it was good because even putting excess glue onto the bottom of the tooth and pushing it onto the spots where I wanted it gave a kind of gum-like texture, like to have more of a difference between the tooth and the actual mask area. Because when you look at his mask, again, he has a little bit of gums or, you know, it kind of looks like gums a little bit where the teeth are um, going into. So I really liked it. I purposefully added a little bit extra of glue so it would totally encapsulate the bottom of the tooth and raise it up a bit. 
And once you're done, we can get painting. I custom mixed a lighter beige tone and base painted that the same way. Um, so basically you're solidly painting this kind of like a light beige uh, color and then you'll go into each divot and darken them up slowly with like a dark brown and then um, a black. And you're just needing to take your time and slowly tap out the color, keep the beige tone next to you so you can add it to some of the darker areas to kind of diffuse it a little bit and help it transition. But a lot of this technique is also helpful to dry brush. So if you paint on the dark brown around the eyes and completely saturate them so that they're just two dark circles, and then you wipe away the top surface of it, it will leave everything in those recessed scratches that we created, and it'll be very cool. And after all that painting, this is the final result. I absolutely love how this mask turned out. I realized I forgot to do an, um, <laughs> an end. I didn't film one, so sorry about that. But this is the finished product. I hope you guys created an awesome mask just like I did. If you have any questions, check out my Discord. The link is in the description down below. And as usual, stay spooky, friends. My hair didn't turn out. Don't ask me about it again. It's not lime green, it's like a minty green like toothpaste and I don't like it.